Hello, welcome to True Hoop with me, Gerard Hector, and it is the return of Coach David Thorpe. How are you, sir? Dry, with power, <laughs> with Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. I got no complaints. Not, yeah. not everyone in my community can say anything close to the same, so we got really lucky. You, you, you are doing well. We, we, we kept our, our True Hoop listeners updated as to what's going on with you. Um, you know, as I said last week, you know, the, the way the hurricane looked like the path was heading, it was heading straight for David's area, um, clear water and where he lived. And, you know, luckily, like some tree branches down, like no damages yeah. to that. Like, I mean, that's his listen, I mean, a win. So, so a week ago, we're driving to Tallahassee. A week ago, we left. I, le- I had to drive my electric car to the airport because apparently they catch fire if they get water in them. That's what from we learned that from Helene. Mm-hmm. So my wife said we can't leave the car at the house. So I drove to Tampa Airport, parked on the fifth floor. So I, that was no worries. That was at two o'clock. My wife picked me up with my mom and our dogs at two o'clock. So if you had told me a week later I'm going to be home with Wi-Fi power, one branch fell through a screen. We, we're, we'll fix it in the next couple of days. We won't, but somebody will. And I got a chance to go see my kid. We we went to we ended up going to Tuscaloosa. Yes, which is I, I, I told hours. our I told our yeah. listeners you were in Tuscaloosa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I spoke to the team, which was cool, and watched my son actually coach, which I've never done before. That was interesting, and um, I was watched to play flag football. Like we had, we had a delightful trip, <laughs> and uh, but not everyone can say the yeah. same. So for anyone listening, uh, my community, it, like North Carolina, is is suffering. And uh, not my neighborhood, but Pinellas County is a, you know, we have lots of people here, uh, as does Hillsborough County, which is Tampa, and Sarasota, which is Manatee County. So we donated to the Red Cross uh, for these two storms. We didn't just do it for Milton. We did it for Helene as well. And um, for anyone listening that has an, a spare $100, or whatever, please, whatever you can send. I, in the weeks and months ahead, Gerard, we'll find out just how devastating everything was. But yeah. You know me. I'm a, I'm a coach, so I'm thinking ahead. Always. We, I booked my rooms in Tallahassee 10 days ago. Yeah. I had rooms all over the state, depending mm-hmm. on which way we had to go. Mm-hmm. And um, we could have stayed in Tallahassee. It had been just fine. But we figured, fuck it. For, what are we going to do? Sit around the hotel. So we right. said five hours to go spend two days in Tuscaloosa. It was great. So all, all is well. And now that, now that I have Wi-Fi as of yesterday, we only had, didn't have it for one day. We got home on Friday. So we got it back on Sunday morning. And uh, I'm watching games and film, and life is normal for us. You're, 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 and, and that's look, and, and that's you know, again, you're thankful for that, right? Because not everyone yeah. uh, is so not fortunate. even close. Not um, even close. So anyone who listens to this podcast knows uh, how much family means to David Thorpe. So I know he and Christy had so much fun spending a couple of days with yeah. Max uh, in Alabama. All right, so well, you got to see two of your sons. One of your real son, yeah. the other your adopted son, Ryan Pinot, yeah. who's the, the assistant coach at University of Alabama men's basketball team. All right, so first I want to know, when you saw Max coach, what was going through your head watching him coach? And then I want to talk about your talk to the team because it was a talk about my favorite topic, which is the NBA is fucking hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so honestly, Gerard, I haven't talked to you. I haven't talked to anyone about this yet. It, it buckled my knees. Um, what, when I got on the court and, uh, and watched him work out, he, you know, all these, all GA of six GAs. Alabama's got an embarrassment of riches, and, and they're also an amazing program also. I don't think they're an amazing program because they have all these coaches, whatever. Uh, it, don't, it only enhances it. So all the GAs have different players that they have to work out each day. My son starts his morning. He's in the gym at 5.45 a.m., and he used to be working with one of the better players on the team. In fact, they probably the leader and captain of the team, Chris Youngblood, but he's hurt a little bit. So now he's working on a walk-on. At 5.45, in fact, the head coach said to me, Nate Oates, later in the day, he said, um, uh, you know, really appreciate Max's work ethic. He's in the gym every morning at 5.45. I said, yeah. Yeah, I talked to Chad about it. Chad's the player, he, the walk-on, he works out. And Nate, Nate said, wait a second, he comes out only for a walk-on? I said, yeah. And he's like, wow. <laughs> he even said that. So, but seeing him on the court talking as an adult, I mean, I, I held this boy, you know, he was 11 <laughs> seconds old, you know. It's, uh, I didn't ask for this. I, I told him this. I left him a long message when I got home on Friday. I didn't ever expect you to be involved in basketball. All of this is your choice. Your dad doesn't care. And um, I just care what kind of person you are and how devoted you are to your craft. And if you're going to be in this business, we have to be about people first. 
Uh, it's not X's and O's before it is about people. And uh, Gerard, I could, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to hostage. I want to take this, this podcast <laughs> hostage. You have a great plan for what we're going to go through today. But he cares so much about his friends and his teammates. He lives with GAs and one manager. He's playing flag football with these guys, which is great. And um, the players came up to me, the ones that he trains. And like, that's, this is our guy. <laughs> and you know how it's like when you talk to my players. Of course. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yep. They, I, although they're more, they're the same age. Max is a year older than some right. of those guys. But he carries himself very professionally, very seriously. He's in amazing shape. He plays a lot still because he's good enough to play. Mm -hmm. So every time they need an extra guy, jump in there, Max, and he's out there playing with the best team in the country. And he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, so it was, it was great. It's just great <laughs> to see him fulfilled and happy. And then um, the speech, yeah. for lack of a better word, yeah, this is the number one team in the country, maybe number two, depending on the polls you look at, seven to nine NBA prospects. I mean, really embarrassingly loaded. And um, the coaches said, I said, what subject do you want? This, you know, if you want me to talk about car mechanics, it's, a, it's an 11-second speech. <laughs> but I could talk about basketball a little bit. What do you want me to do? And they said, just tell them how fucking hard it is. <laughs> so I did. I talk, And I, I also try to talk about, like, it's not the scoring. It's not the step-back threes. It's how good are you setting screens? You know, how much pride are you taking with your arm placement and drop coverage? I This morning, I didn't tell them this because it happened this morning. But this morning, I'm texting, oh, I think he's got, this is his eighth year, one of my players, where he did a great job left-hand contest. We, we talk about being ambidextrous shot mm -hmm. contesters. So if, you're, if, it, if, if your offensive player is shooting a right-handed shot over your left hand, get your left hand up, not your right hand up across your body. So my player did that, but he didn't drop his right hand first into the pit, the, the, the pocket That's, passing yeah. lane mm -hmm. as much as I wanted him to. So what I was telling these guys on, on a Thursday is a detail is everything. Because the, I didn't mention the names. They know who they are. All these players that you know by one name or CP, two mm -hmm. letters, mm -hmm. they're going to take advantage of every detail you fuck up on. It, it, it is the law of that jungle, of that business, is every mistake you make. Just like in the real world, I was watching uh, some documentary. I was just so happy to have direct TV. When I got <laughs> home. We had no internet on Saturday. And I don't care about college football, really. So I was having lunch, watching something, and some lion ran away from elephants, amazingly enough, with only two of his three cubs. That's a detail that you can't fuck up on. And so I don't know what happened. I was afraid to look, so I turned it away. But um, that's the NBA, you know, uh, uh, cutthroat business that we have is for every mistake you make, you're going to get eaten alive. And so you have to have an attention to detail. You have to take pride in that. That's what I was talking to those guys about, that uh, the world's best players care about all the little things with, with very few exceptions. Luca is so overwhelmingly good on <laughs> offense, as is someone like Tyrese. They can let a little defense slip by. Although I thought they both tried hard in the playoffs. None of those guys are Luka on US Alabama. None of them. Correct. Although they do have a John Morant type players. Not getting any draft love now, but he's going to be a lottery pick named LeBaron. Uh, maybe LeBaron Phillips. I'm not even sure. But he's special. But yeah, you just can't roll out of bed and think talent alone works in this league. You're going to get destroyed. So yeah. that's what I talked about. No, and, and I love that because that is, as you know, one of my favorite topics of discussion and, you know, because it is to your point, like it's all the little tiny details. Like as soon as you said the right hand contestant ambidextrous, I knew I was like, I bet he fucked up on the passing lane. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it's yeah. like the, the, that's well, the other and, piece. <laughs> and Nate Oates had just taken his staff to an NBA training camp the day before. And one of the things he said is. They're just all so tall. <laughs> you know, he, he, he had the number two player in the class a year ago, number one player in the right. class, number two in the draft class, Brandon Miller. Mm -hmm. That's a 6'9 guard. And that's where I think a lot – I mean, it's amazing. The, I looked it up the other day. The average shooting guard this year uh, is 6'5", starting. Mm -hmm. That is smaller than it was when I first started this business in 2003. It was 6'7". The skill game has gotten – but still, 6'5 is not small. Correct. It's just small for the position that it used to be, but you know threes, fours, and fives. If you're a six, 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 seven alone, you're you're in some trouble. Yeah, it's just you're 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 at a, a size disadvantage, and then you throw in 
the talent level, the skill level, the shooting level, the movement, fluidity level of these guys. Uh, it is, um, it's a bunch of the world's best athletes playing speed chess. That's really the best way I can define it. I didn't use that phrase to them. I should have. I did talk about fast processing brains. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I talked to some of the coaches on the team who, uh, more than a few, who talked about processing speeds. That, that some of their really, really athletic 6'7", six, 6'8", six, players aren't processing as fast. They're young. Right. And so you hope that they can figure stuff out because otherwise they'll get run over in the next level. In this level, they'll be fine. In college, yep. they'll be fine. Yep. No, it, it, it's a lot. And it, listen, that uh, obviously you had so much fun uh, seeing Max do his thing, right? As his dad, you'll always think of him as that little boy, right? 11 seconds old coming out, right? But he's a, he's a young man now, right? And so, and it's not too surprising, right? That he is so detailed oriented, right? Because that's who you are, right? And if he, if he learned from you, which he clearly did, right? He's like, well, I'm doing a lot of what my dad does, right? This is how my dad works. Well, here's the best thing. You're going to love this so much, Sherrod. You're going to love this so much when I tell you this. <laughs> No one there outside of the main coaches knew what I did. Mm, mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. None of his roommates did. Yeah. I met him. One guy yeah. went to the University of Michigan. Now he's getting a, a master's and his second year GA. He got a ring the other night because they went to the Final Four. So the ring ceremony was Friday night, but we, we drove home that day. He had no idea. He knew I was involved somehow in basketball. Right. Like, my son is not trading on mm -hmm. my name for anyone. Sure I love that about him. I wouldn't mind if he did, by the way. It's his choice. But he's chosen to not – he wants to He wants to earn it himself. It's always how he's been. He's the type that, all right, Max, got to make one more three for us to get out of here. You can't give him a good pass. You got to give him a terrible pass. <laughs> I, I don't agree with that, by the way. <laughs> My best shooters ever were ne never that way. All right. They're like, they oh, fucking make a shot. Give me a good fucking pass. All right. <laughs> but, but the brains like him, they want everything to be even harder than normal. And so, so that's his approach. And uh, the last thing I'll say is, when we said goodbye um, on Thursday night, he had dinner at my hotel. We couldn't go anywhere. We had two dogs. So yeah. we just brought food. We brought in. He, he hugged his mom so genuinely. <laughs> and he really loves his mom and, and my mom too. But he really loves his mom. And uh, he's a good boy. At the end of the day, you know, that matters a lot more than me Correct. than anything else. He's a good boy. His roommates love him because he's super chill. And here's the other great thing I was saying. He talks like a player because he's been a player his Correct. whole life. None of them, none of the other GAs were players. They were managers first. Mm -hmm. So he comes in with all these crazy phrases with, you know, you learn from Scotty Barnes and all the other guys. Right. He, and they're like, this dude is weird. <laughs> and now one guy told me, we all just talk like him. <laughs> we all just talk like him because it's so different the way he talks. And, uh, and he's just really chill. He's just a super loving, chill guy. I'm obviously a very proud dad. Uh, and he loves hoops and he loves people. And so he's, he's, he's doing great. So the hurricane was terrible, awful, horrible. It, we turned it into the best weekend we could, and it worked out fine. And that is wonderful. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Max Thorpe. And uh, good luck to Alabama men's basketball team this season um, as they go for Start a return points. to the Final Four and yeah. possibly a national championship. All right, David, yeah. we are continuing our NBA season previews. Preseason yeah. games have already started. Most teams have played three times at least already, some teams four times. Um, and by the end of the week, we'll be done. And then the season starts next Tuesday, I want to say. Yeah, that's about right. Tuesday. Oh, and then everybody uh, yeah, else. That's right. And then everybody else okay. will play starting Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe the 23rd. Yes, I 23rd. Think. Yeah, whatever day that is. It'll be Boston. Two, two Boston games plays. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Denver. I forget. Yeah. yeah. But two, two games York. for sure that night. And then we'll, and then we'll move forward. I think Boston, New York. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, uh, that's a little, that's a little preview for something later we got coming on. All right, so let's do maybe. some awards, David. Uh, maybe. David. Maybe. maybe. Yes, maybe. We don't know for sure. Uh, we'll do some award predictions. And look, again, people, I want to be very clear about this. We have no fucking idea who's going to win any of these things. This is Nobody just does. What, no one does. This is what we think as of October 14th, right? We don't know who's getting injured in two weeks. We know none of that. We have no crystal balls. But as it stands right sure. now, this is what we think and where we could see the season going as it relates to awards and some Final Four and championship predictions. All right, so let's start with MVP, David. Who do you think will be this season's NBA MVP? Okay, so you know I'm not a very good rule follower. <laughs> and I'm aware that people like people who will gamble on stuff, which I don't know what you do. I don't care I don't, any no. of this. Um, so my thought going in was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, if I was, a, if I was a gambler, I'd be sprinkling money around. And so I've got names. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll happy to tell you the guy that I think is, if I had to pick one who I'd pick, 
Mm-hmm. So let me give you my names, and I'm going to see if you can pick the one I'm going to pick. Okay. Okay. You, you're going to have – you're probably – I'm your sure list, we have the same names. I would think. I, I have one that's a little bit different. So okay. I've got – I'm not – this is in no order. Okay, and then you can pick who you think it is. I've got Anthony Edwards. Mm-hmm. I've got Jason Tatum because mm-hmm. he'll be the best player, I think, on the best team. the best team, yep. And I also just think that with what happened in the – Olympics and everything, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, it's a media driven award. So sure is. They, sure okay, is. there's a narrative there, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jokic, because if you don't have it on the list, you should be fired. <laughs> <laughs> He's just ridiculous. And then SGA, mm-hmm. best, maybe the best record this year. Mm-hmm. And Luca. Interesting. Okay. So yeah. Who would you, who would you, who would you think? And if I'm missing a name, cause I may be, uh, tell me. That's everyone I have. Um, I also added Embiid, though he said that if doctors tell him he's not going to play because it's better for the postseason, he won't. I'll see. It. I'll I, believe it when I see it. But that's why I pulled his name off, is I actually okay. don't think he'll play 65 games okay. because I do think he can contend if he's healthy. Okay. I, which we we both agree on that. That We did our 30 questions for the East, you and I. Yeah. That was the, one of the – I was like, well, yeah. is Joel Embiid going to be healthy? Because none, none right. of this matters if he's not. Right. Um, so I think you probably have – hmm – the analytical part of you is probably like SGA, but the story part of you, Tatum. I mean, your narratives, your your arguments are good, but <laughs> I, honestly, I just think it's Luca's year. <laughs> well, what do you, when you get to me, <laughs> so we have all the same names, and I, so I said Luca, right? And let me tell you yeah. exactly what, what I wrote down. Luca Doncic, the narrative is set up. It's his year. Dallas should win enough games, and he'll have a stretch yeah. where his play leads every talking show for like two weeks straight. You know, where he's doing like. 40 and like 16 or whatever, yeah. the, whatever the hell he's going to score 30 a game and right. they're going to win 50 plus Correct. games. And Correct. And he's good. He's going to be right there. I, I would lean. Yeah. Yes. If I was, if I had a thousand dollars, I'd probably put a little to gamble on those five. I'd probably put a little extra into Lucas, I guess. And so, and I said, Jokic, SGA and Bede will have their say and SGA being the biggest push in my opinion. Now I said, this is about Tatum. Tatum won't get a ton of MVP talk, though he should. And the reason why he does it is to your same point. We had a conversation about narratives this morning on our content call. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, Tatum has this weird occupation in NBA media spaces. I don't, I don't know what it's about. It's like, he's good, but he's not that good. And I don't know what that good means. Like, And I guess in the context of this, they're saying they don't think he's top five. I'm like, but he's made all NBA for his team. So clearly he's <laughs> top five somewhere. But be that as it may Tatum has this he has this thing about him that I don't know why for whatever reason narrative wise it may not all go his way for a variety of reasons but we all have the same people in our MVP lace and we think Luke is probably the guy okay last comment on MVP if we have if we have a true podcast for the next eight years barring injury this will be the last time we don't have Wemby in our top correct correct that is correct yeah Oh, I, we'll get to him in, in a second. All right. Uh, rookie of the year. Boy, is this a clunker list. <laughs> you got that right. You got that right. This is uh, the Anthony Bennett year. Although I don't remember uh, who won the rookie of the year that year, but it wasn't a good year going in. I, I think I think the favorite I'd make Rizzo Shea because I think he'll play enough minutes. And that's really the big key is, is you got to put up numbers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I have uh, uh, Stephon Castle just because I don't know I don't think they're strong at the guard spot. And so they could end up being an interesting 35 to 40 win team, 41 win team. He could be getting decent minutes and just, you know, Malcolm Brogdon won MVP, uh, rookie of the year for that reason. Correct. And so I got Stephon Castle. Uh, not that I think he'll put up great numbers. And then my dark horse would be a sal- a Salon from Charlotte, mm. Mm. Uh, who's shooting really well in the, in the, in the preseason. I don't know what it means. Um, he does play behind Brandon Miller, but they can go big and play him with Brandon Miller. And I'm not so sure they shouldn't go for the future. LaMelo, Miller, Salon, uh, those those are – Melo's the small guy at 6'7". That would be an interesting group there. So those are my three right now, but it's it's an ugly class. Although I think they can be plenty of good players, but yeah. no one really jumps out like Wemby last year. Yeah, they need their time to develop, as, 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 we, all, as we all know. Okay, so I said um... – I'm excited about Risa Shea and Saar because I, I want to see them, right? They, I, I want to see what they're like. I am also excited, David, about Ryan Dunn in Phoenix. He can play defense, and if that shooting is real, and uh, preseason is a small sample size, but he was 6 of 11 last night, I think, from three. How like, much will he play? 
listen, on that team, if he's a three and D guy, he should play a ton, right? If right. He, will he? Well, that, listen. Uh, yeah. With Bud as the coach, fucking no idea. <laughs> well, well, but that it could work out. I mean, you got to let him play early. And, I agree. And you got to let these guys play early if you if you're going to expect him to help you late. Well, there we go. And, if and Phoenix Bucks, has enough talent where they may correct. be able to do it, but I, I just to me it just it's hard it's hard to get a lot a lot of minutes on those better teams. Uh, that that is the challenge. But again, yeah. if this is a team that will need help in the postseason, which it will, you, you're not yeah. going to find out in April if he's any good. You got to find out now, which might mean well, you we might lose some games or he might. Well, fine. Uh, that's my feeling about this. But coaches think differently. All right, and the person who I picked, kind of a homer pick, but Zach Eady, only because. If he can connect with John ja Morant on the pick and roll, and if he rebounds reasonably well, he'll be on the best team of any rookie in terms of wins, or should be. So, and if he's a starter, right, because Ryan does not going to start in Phoenix. So, <laughs> no, maybe? no, that was my issue with Edie, because I actually have watched him in the preseason a little bit. Uh, I, he's gotten thin. Like, he looks good. Um, now he'll build muscle over time. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. He's dropped weight, I think. Uh, I don't. I just I don't know how he stays on the court for long. He'll, he'll, he fouls a ton already, so that's already a problem. They're good. Yeah, they they've got to make a move to get a center. Mm, so you think yeah. trade or, okay. or just play Triple J at the five? At five, mm. which mm. which they could do. Yeah, and yep. then Edie doesn't does, is not playing much. Correct, correct. Yeah, so that's yeah. <laughs> you just want to pick a Memphis player. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I will tell you, I uh, uh, I'm game planning. I don't game plan the preseason at all. Except for when you play Memphis, just because he's new. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, if you're playing Minnesota, I don't have to tell my players, hey, Rudy, go there. First box shit when Rudy's mm-hmm. in the game. Right. Yeah, they they know that. For that. You yeah. know, where it's like you don't reach your, your hand of the fire more than once when you're young. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they don't know Zach Eady. Most of these guys haven't played against Zach Eady. Right. And so I have to remind them he's just a gigantic human being. Yes. And uh, so there's something to be said for that, but that gigantic human being probably is on the bench. If he can't stay out of foul trouble, or if they bring in a five, yeah, or if they play Triple J at the five because they found a good four. Correct. Uh, defensive player of the year. Okay, here's my list. <laughs> uh, the, the the dark horse in, in name only because of uh, minutes played is Jonathan Isaac. Mm-hmm. Yep. I just don't know if he'll play enough. Sincerely, yep. just because he's the best defensive player in the world when he does play. Um. So now I would lean. Well, I'll leave, I'll leave him for last. I've got Holmgren on the list. Mm-hmm. I've got Triple J on the list. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping, mm-hmm. for your sake, as much as anything, <laughs> I, I love him. I love him. He, he returned. He's, I, won, he's won it before, two years ago. So he'd return to winning it. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and and then I had I had a, I have to put one dude that isn't seven foot eleven, uh, Alice Caruso, because yeah, so they're going to be. Obviously, a high level team. Yes, and he's going to be a magnificent, magnificent defender. I think, but but I'm I'm going to lean towards Wemby. He's he's got a chance to put up just astounding metrics. Mm-hmm. The game should really slow down for him in year two, and it's you're going to see just this enormous dude. Didn't Giannis win? Yes, like one or two maybe. He, he won one for sure. That he won he won a double one year. DPOI and MVP. Wow, I forgot about that. Uh, Wemby is going to just he's just so long and agile. I think he's going to put up huge metrics and yep. and and be the difference maker. I had all those guys that you mentioned and I said, "Question, should we call it the Wemby Award for the next decade?" Yeah. <laughs> Cuz how many times <laughs> in the next 10 years will he not finish within the top 3 within this award? Um the question I have though, David, is now after you know how people always say, well, more more than football into in basketball, but the same principles apply. Well, the, the tape is out now, right? So it's been a full year of knowing what Wemby can do. Yeah. I'm wondering how teams will approach it differently. Now knowing, okay, seven foot four is no longer something I haven't seen before. I've seen it. How have how will teams and players adjust dealing with him in the game? I mean, look, seven four, seven four. So you can adjust all you want, but size is size. So you're gonna have a, a number of veterans, uh, even younger veterans who learned their lesson, they got burned, and so they're gonna avoid uh, uh, to paint more, but that's also going to translate into better defense for the Spurs because you're not going to make as many shots. And then you got a bunch of new knuckleheads that'll enter the league thinking, ah, oh, you fucking, <laughs> fucking Wemby, fuck that guy, French fuck, whatever. <laughs> that's what they're saying in their heads. And then, boop, 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 he's going to block all the shots. Oh, okay, that's what all the fucking hubbub's about. Oh, that's what the hype is, yeah. 
that's what these guys are thinking. Uh, you, you may even score on them once. I mean, if I'm, if I watched the Spurs a lot last year. Yeah. Uh, if you scored on Wemby once, I, I just remember thinking all the time, like, oh, that's so great for San Antonio. Because now you think you can do it again, and you're just you're not mm-hmm. going to get there again. When, yeah. Wemby is just he's so good. He's I mean, tell you the game slowing down is the biggest thing for him. Just watch as as you start seeing stuff. Because I talk to these young players who are in year two, and you could just see their games. Oh, they're starting to recognize mm-hmm. stuff they couldn't rec- Well, he's advanced anyway. Yes. And now a year's experience of watching film. Uh, a Chris Paul coaching him mm-hmm. up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's going to be a really dynamic player. Al- already a thoughtful player and someone I considered smart just from like yeah. interviews and everything. If yeah. the processing speed is starting to speed up for him, which in turn means the game is slowing down, good Lord. Because again, yeah. the size allows him to make up for what may not be there from a, from a processing speed standpoint, right? Because he's 7'4". So, right, we've seen guys get get by him quote unquote but they're yeah. not because his arm's slowing you reach out and poke the ball away anyway well if he's also the game is slowing down for him well it's almost a cheat code right now it's unfair because he's so big and this i'm so excited to see him this year all right uh six man of the year okay so first of all is ty Jones gonna start i think so i think so so he if he if so he won't be on this list mm-hmm. I, the obvious one is malik monk mm-hmm. uh I, I think Trey Murphy is going to mm-hmm. play a lot, but I'm not sure he starts. He's hurt right now, so who the hell knows what's happening there? Yeah, Ham- hamstring, I, mean, I think. But yeah, he'll be, yeah, yeah. He'll be fine. Uh, but I like – this is going to be crazy. Uh, some people are saying Ben Matherin. Um, I do think it's possible. I think he can really score off the bench. Yeah. He's too yeah. young, for my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Boston is going to be thinking our best chance to repeat is to make sure we're super healthy. And so we don't need to play Drew and Derek as much mm. as, as maybe we would in the past. And I think that opens up Peyton Pritchard nice. to be like a 13, 14 point per game score on, on the best team in the East, if not one of the two best teams in the league. And so I kind of have a sneaky thing about Peyton Pritchard this year. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan and just talking to people in Boston when I was up there, he's just murdering it. And he nice. looks good in the preseason. Yeah. I, I like it. I mean, no, that it, I like those picks. I think, um, the six man of the year award typically goes to whoever the highest scorers off the bench. That's just how it's yeah. always gone for the majority of the time. So I'm always thinking about, okay, who's going to score a lot of points going off the bench. You mentioned Malik Monk, um, Nas Reed, um, because if yeah, it's Randall, he's, so Reed. he'll be there as well. Here are two players who I don't know if they're going to score a lot, but in the metrics, they will be the most impactful people in terms of helping their team win. And by definition, they should be top six man of the year candidates. Alex Caruso, if he doesn't start and Josh Hart. Those guys will be EPM monsters. Yeah, I thought I thought Caruso would start, and I thought Nas Reed might start. Right. Yeah. So he they they were my same thought line of thinking as Ty Jones is. Uh, I, I, their starters obviously they can't win. Right. Correct. Uh, Reed, if Reed if Reed's coming off the bench, did he win last year? He might have. Yeah, I think he did. I think he did. Because he might have been my pick too. No, I don't Nas Reed. Let me but, check. Uh, I'm pretty sure yeah, he's he a, last year. He's a ter- He's obviously yeah. A, a great player. Oh yeah, great love, love Nasri. Yeah, he 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 won last year. All right, folks, we'll be yeah. back after a brief commercial break. Yeah, with, with those guys, David, I just love the idea. Again, Caruso and and, and Hart are just so talk about helping you win pos, pos, possessions. Those two are among the best in the league at doing that. And you know, people, oh, oh who scored twenty points a game like Jordan Clarkson? I'm like, yeah, but does Jordan help you win games? Or yeah. Does he score buckets? Right. Um. All right. Most improved player. This is my longest list by far. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of names. Wemby is, is an obvious of, one. Of course. I think Paolo Bancaro is another obvious one. And it, the obvious is, is uh, they put up numbers, but now they, they hopefully have metrics and more wins in the case of, of both teams, of both players. Uh, that really helps their cause. Uh, Cade Cunningham mm-hmm. is a name that jumps out at me. Uh, he played 65 games last year, but he, no one really recognized it. Now he's being paid a bunch of money. Because well, they were shit last year, too. <laughs> they won 14 games. If they can get to 25 wins, whatever, he'll, he'll be there. Uh, I think, well, I'll save my favorite for the last. I told you guys this morning, I really like Jay Nivey. Mm-hmm. What, he's, what I've seen this preseason, what I saw last year from being one of the worst few players in the NBA to being pretty average mm-hmm. on a bad team, that's, to me, impressive. Yep. And he's had an amazing preseason. And so if that continues, you're going to hear his name. I just don't know if they're going to win enough. Uh, let's see what else. I got a couple of surprises. Um, 
I think Chet Holmgren is going to get some run because he's going to be playing into all-star level play. Uh, I like Mark Williams from Charlotte, Mm -hmm. who was injured last year some. I think has a lot of upside to grow into. Uh, My favorites are... My second favorite, my runner-up would be Nemhard from Indiana mm. because he's got that playoff experience yep. behind him. Everyone knows who he is now. And Tyrese hamstring issues, we're going to see, I think, him play more point guard as a scorer. And if, if he just does, I mean, I think he had played really well the first preseason game. Uh, if he just has a bunch of 15, 16, 17-point games and the Pacers do what they think they're going to do, I just think you'll hear that name a lot. But my favorite would be J Dub from OKC because I think he's going to go. He's going to make the jump, the second hardest jump. Very good player. It's all star. We're going to start hearing a lot about him as the second best player on the best team in the West, and so I, I would think he he's the most likely candidate. Yeah, we we had a lot of the same names: Wemby, Paolo, all those guys, uh, Jabari Smith Jr., a, a bunch of players. Oh, I didn't put can, him down, but yeah, you really do throw it. Throw him in there. Um, our favorite is the same, Jalen Williams. I do think he makes that jump to All Star. If he doesn't make it, he's going to be very much All Star buzzy all year, right? Snub or whatever. And then the other player, someone we talked about, does he, we think he has the tools? Can he make the jump? Is Evan Mobley? Um, if he becomes yeah. a consistent offensive, we don't need him so. defensively. That's a game changer for uh, Cleveland in many ways because it might mean, oh, well, now we're going to trade Jared Allen or whatever. So uh, uh, Evan Mobley isn't the name I'm also keeping my eyes on. All right. Uh, coach of the year. Okay, I've got an interesting list. Um, I'm going to start with the veterans. I think Rick Carlisle is going to get votes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because I think they're going to be tremendous and um, are these very good. And I think he's going to get a lot of credit for it, which he deserves. I think the Warriors might surprise some people this year. And so I think you're gonna, no one's expecting that. Everyone thinks they're in the 40s, me included. If they get to the 50-ish bubble, I think Steve Kerr is going to get some votes. I think uh, Eric Spolstra from Miami, mm. who, again, no one thinks anything right. of, has got a little something up his sleeve. Uh, I like what I've seen from them. And so uh, those are the veteran veterans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Charles Lee yeah. has some interesting names, mm-hmm. the guys in Charlotte, that it, they can be pretty competitive for a playing spot. Uh, Kenny Atkinson mm-hmm. Cleveland. Uh, yep. is, you know, is, is inheriting a, a good team. Very good team. And so I think, and he's done it before. And then I would, but my, my pick today, uh, this is strolling from the heart, not mm-hmm. the head, would be Jamal Mosley. <laughs> yeah, David, we've done too many podcasts together yeah. because we I think you're the same thing. <laughs> yeah. um, I, 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 they just got to be able to score this year. Well, yes. But, uh, so for me, it's Charles Lee and Jamal Mosley. Those are the two I'm keeping my eyes yeah. on. I think Charles Lee has injected, from what I can see in the preseason, a compete level that was missing from this team. Uh, and if they just if they just compete, they're, these guys are young, but they're talented, man. Like, and if Lamelo again, hate to harp on it, but if Lamelo has bought in and is like, I'm going to be a competitor. That's going to trickle down, man. Look, I'm not going to say they're not making the playoffs, but they'll be competitive and they'll win they more than the play-in team. They could be. And they get s- team. trounced probably in the first right. round. Uh, Brandon Miller didn't make my MIP list because I, I don't mind picking guys in year two, but a lot of people won't. Right. And so I didn't. That's why I don't have any year two guys, I don't think. But um, Wemby's different. Mm-hmm. No one treats him as another second year player. <laughs> right. But Brandon Miller, I think, can, can have a breakout season. Yeah. And therefore, Charlotte and Charles Lee will, will elevate up as well. I'm with you 100%. All right, folks, those are our awards. Now we're getting into some team prognostication Eastern Conference Finals, Western Conference Finals, and NBA Finals. Again, this is as of today how the teams are currently constructed. Right. I have no idea who's getting hurt, who's getting traded, none of that. As of today, this is what we see. All you right. F- Eastern Conference Finals. Right now, look, if you don't pick the Boston Celtics as one of your teams, I think, I don't know, what are you, what are you, <laughs> what are you watching? I mean, David had a funny stat for us this morning. He's like, in the preseason, who do you think is number one in net rating by a country mile? And I'm like, I don't know. The Celtics, and it's by a lot. Um, 20.5. <laughs> And so <laughs> help to beat Philly by 40. Correct. So look, I, I, undefeated. until further evidence tells me otherwise, I like Boston. Now, this may seem like a hypocritical pick, what I'm going to say next, because of how much I bag on this coach and his, non, and his non-belief in science. Not but, Brooklyn. Not Brooklyn, no. <laughs> but, 
Thibodeau and the Knicks. Only because, look, this team is going to be good. Like, they're going to be very good. I worry about them because I think they might be dead in, in, in April and May. But if somehow they are not, God, they're going to be such. I mean, look, they were good last year and competed when they were down, to, I don't know, six and a half guys when everybody got hurt, right? So I think this will be a very good team. So my Eastern Conference Finals right now, Boston Celtics, New York Knicks. Who do you got? I don't have the Knicks. That's, I, I figured as much. Listen, the last two nights, I've had almost seven hours of sleep both nights. That's unheard of. And it wasn't <laughs> alcohol-induced. Uh, because I had to do a bunch of work with trees and logs. And we got a lot of debris down. My whole neighborhood is a disaster area with, luckily, just trees and branches. And my point is, I'm not doing that this week because I have to work. I'm hiring someone to do the rest of the stuff that has to be done. Because I need to do basketball stuff. Correct. Like there's only X amount of energy I have in my body. Of course, I'm over 60. These guys aren't. But the lesson's the same. And so Thibodeau ain't going to hire someone else to let these guys do work. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do it. That's what the money's for, he's thinking. And I think come April, trouble. Yeah. yeah. So I've got Boston. I just, I think they're deep. Their two-way players are really good. Yep. Uh, one of the two-way guys had 23 last night. Um and looked the part on nine shots, by the way. 23 on nine shots. Um, I like I like the, Jordan Walsh looks good as a guy that probably deserves some playing time as a second-year player out of Arkansas who's like 20 years old. Um, Tata looks good like a and, yeah. you know, Porzingis. They, we already know. Every, we know injuries are going to happen. Mm -hmm. We know Boston won a championship without Porzingis. They mm -hmm. got him to help them win the championship. Didn't need him in the finals or even the semis, really. Although he was important against Indiana yep. early – early in the series so yeah boston to me is a, is a heavy favorite twin east i started thinking about Embiid's health in the playoffs and uh you don't believe it you don't trust it milwaukee you don't trust them either the knicks no because of and so now what indiana I, <laughs> indiana or miami is where <laughs> i was going and it wasn't easy to pick against the heat because i just I just have a funny feeling we're going to see a resurgence from them. Okay. I do. But, yeah, at the end of the day, I, I thought, okay. I, I, I heard it directly from Brad Stevens and an assistant coach of the Celtics. Right. They also said this publicly. The Pacers gave them right. – they were their toughest competitor. They won in four, but three of those games were in doubt in the fourth quarter. And just shit happens like that sometimes. But they have experience. I'm a little worried about Tyrese's hamstring. Uh, that's what worries I, me a little. I, it's a fair worry, Gerard. I don't love what he, what he looked in the play, in the preseason. That being said, they they've done well without him too, and uh, I love Obi Toppin off the bench. I oh, love TJ McConnell off the bench. Mm -hmm. Mathurin at twenty five the other night. I actually think they're going to do a trade consolidation. They've got Jarris Walker and Ben Mathurin, neither of which are necessarily needed to be in the top nine because mm -hmm. they have Ben Shepard, who's a good looking three man for them as well as a backup too. And so I, yeah, I love Siakam on a new. He's got a new deal. Yep. Tyree Miles is playing for a new deal, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing great things about James Wiseman from Indiana from as, multiple as, as sources. Yep, yep, yep. From yep. multiple sources on the mm -hmm. team, like he's starting to figure out what they need from him, and he can provide something they desperately need. Yep. So I just think I don't think they'll beat Boston in a series again. I think it'll be an amazing series, but Boston's killing the league right now in preseason. They have the best offense in the league. Like they did last year. Indiana's number two, just like last year. Yep. With Tyrese not doing much or not even Siakam hasn't played past halftime either. It's Nemhard. And they're number two again. There's something there. Yeah. It's their system. They're stacking actions, their pace. I I think that you right now it's October. We're betting on health. Mm -hmm. I have Indiana being the healthiest to play with Boston in the finals. Um, you would agree though that in order for them to be a true title contender, Tyrese that means has to be great. Okay. That's what I was gonna ask you. Okay. Yeah, they need Tyrese to be all NBA level okay. uh, for me to pick them here. Yeah, I, I, and, and so that's a fair question. Uh, but people tell me he's going to be fine. I haven't seen it. Right, we'll see when it's early still. Yeah. All right, Western Conference, who do you got in the finals? I know we have one team the same for sure. Okay. OKC, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not hard. They learned their lesson last year. They're loaded. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they've got the veteran in Caruso, former champion. Not that mm -hmm. it matters that much. They've got assets more than mm -hmm. ever. Sam Presti, you're, you've run out of bullets to fire on. We don't, we don't want to make any decisions now. Let's just let's just see what happens. 
No, you're a contender. They can win now and in the future. That, that, that's where they are. <laughs> so you can't wait. The window is closing. Correct. And it's, the, it's, it's closed. No, this is you're in, you're in championship mode time. And they are this. You can argue that all the things Sam has done has been to put them in position for right now where they can move a couple of draft picks that they'll never miss, mm-hmm. get themselves whatever piece they need. Yep. And remember, Hartenstein, I've always contended. I could be mm-hmm. wrong. He is a trade piece. Yep. You got him to make sure no one else got him that's a competitive with you. You can dictate where he goes and maybe get what you want for him too. Mm-hmm. If, if you decide to trade him, which we don't know. Right. So I've got OKC as one. My sneaky suspicion is I have the same other opponent as you do. Interesting. Who is it? Minnesota. No, I didn't go Minnesota. I really only because go Minnesota. I I think the loss of Cat's going to hurt them more than I think they realize. Um, and, and I look. This, this, this is not about Anthony Edwards not being great. I, I'm I, I predict that Mike Conley is a little bit not a little bit a lot older, and I don't know if McDaniel's yet is ready to be what I hope he can be, which is an elite three point shooter, and he's already an elite defender. If he is that, then I'll change my mind. I just don't know if it's going to happen yet. Who I picked is because I bet on the fact that one of their two guys, other two guys is going to be an all-star this year. And that's the Denver Nuggets. Because Jokic is still the world's best player. And if Murray or MPJ are an all-star this year, I think they'll be fine. So I got OKC in Denver uh, in the in Western Conference. So, so I looked at it as I'm going to bet on Naz Reed being yeah. a very good replacement to Cat. Um, more so than... Fair. One of those other two guys making all stars. Uh, you're not wrong. You you described it perfectly. Jamal Murray is it's it's his time, but I don't trust their bench. I, yeah, I didn't two years ago. Well, don't, I just, I mean, let me take that back. I don't know if it's not good. They don't play it, so I don't know. How will we know if it's good or not? <laughs> it could be. I don't know. Yeah, I just um I watched them play yesterday. I'm not, I'm not convinced. Mm. Uh, you. You, you, I pick the field in the West before yes. I pick any one team. Yes, uh, Golden State is in the field. Mm-hmm. The Lakers are in the field. Memphis the Clippers the probably are. Memphis teams. is in the field. I just, yeah, right now I lean towards Naz and uh, uh, Nas and um, finding a point guard to do what they need to do. So I'd have them as, uh, yeah, right now my slight favorites. And I, but I pick Thunder Boston to be in the final. Yes, round. and so we both have Thunder Boston in an NBA. Last year's number one seeds. Yeah, and that honestly. That would be a hell of a finals matchup because um, I think oh my God, OKC yeah. can do some things that really bother Boston. Um, I think the presence of Caruso, um, Lou Dort, like the, these are defenders you can put on Tatum and Brown, right? right? But then you have you have Derek White and Drew Holiday who can really give Shea and J Dub fits. But you have Chet Holmgren who, if he is you know, all-star light, it's like, well, you better have Porzingis because as much as I love Al Horford, he's getting older, right? So it's that would be a very interesting matchup. Um, and again, that's what they look like now. Who knows what could happen trade-wise, consolidation, whatever going forward. But that's what, what it looks like for us. I think, you know, look, we see it kind of the same, right? All, OKC, they're ready, as you said. Their time is now. All the moves that Presti made. It's to do this year. You're here, championship window. Let's see now, you know? And I, I'm curious if they're going to actually do it and like, you know, push, make the push to go for that title. One, one last thing just regarding this season is mm-hmm. you're going to see probably scoring go down a little bit because they're going to allow more fouls to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's a given teams are already hearing from the NBA about that. So um, I think that uh, that's going to have an impact yeah. on, on the overall scoring and, uh, and also gives the teams a, a, a more of a license defensively to, to be physical because you're going to be allowed to be physical. Mm-hmm. And so there'll be an adjustment period for that, for yep. sure. Uh, and um, if, if I were to say to you the single biggest question mark going into the season as it relates to who might win a championship, I, I, what's your, what would your answer be? I, I know what my question mark is. Uh, so it's a team that I have the biggest question mark about? Uh, yeah, regarding yeah, anything you want. I mean, honestly, it's Philly and, and B's health. That's exactly what I think. I mean, I... I it, Again, everything else is a non-starter. If this dude is 65% in April, well, then fucking they're not going to lose in the yeah. second round. I mean, that's just yeah. what it is. And, and, and conversely. Yes. If he's healthy, if then he's, If out. he's moving. Like, I, I, I had a couple. I told you guys this morning, I had a couple of players tell me when they lost their last game in the playoffs, they were so mad for the obvious reasons, but also because they felt physically amazing because they had their own personal physio, mm-hmm. who was a magician. 
if Embiid can find someone like that or or whatever it takes, that that's a real game changer because he we can quickly forget that he can be along with Jokic the best player in the world. Oh, I mean that when his MVP run that. Again, as I said about Luca, he'll lead every talk show with those nights where he's scoring 40 and 16 assists, whatever. And beat is similar in that it's those nights where it's 38 and like 16 boards. And it's like, oh my God, like you can't stop this dude. There's nothing is, you can do with him. He There's is a mountain of a human that you yeah. can't move. You'll foul mm-hmm. him. He'll go to the free throw line two dozen times. Like it, he's awesome. But he, he's the hardest in April. guy. He's the hardest. So I've been trying to help players guard people since 2003. He he's the single hardest matchup I think I've ever had to deal with. Literally, there, you're just there's nothing you can do. You have to hope he doesn't feel great. <laughs> Pretty much, and he's, 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 mission, he's mission jump jumpers, right? Yeah. Like I mean, yeah, he's incredible. Yeah. So if he's healthy, that that changes a lot. Yes, because Paul George looks great, and we already yeah. we love Tyrese Maxey. Uh, look, that that's a three headed monster. That I mean, and, that, and Cody Martin's a good addition. Yeah. I mean, not many teams have better top three guys than those. Like, they're it's really good top three. So, yeah. you know, we'll see. All right, folks. Uh, we will see you later in the week.